Hi there boys and girls, tonight's lesson is lesson 4.4, multiplying decimals using the expanded form. Remember back in fourth grade, we also would call this the box method. Our essential question is how can you use expanded form and place value to multiply a decimal and a whole number? So let's turn in our Go Math book to lesson 4.4 and let's get started. Let's take a look at lesson 4.4 in our Go Math book to review how to draw a model to find the product. And number one shows the model for you. Now this is a lot like what we did with our whole numbers back in fourth grade. So this should be fairly similar to you. However, it is a little different though because we do have decimals that we're multiplying instead of all whole numbers. So please be careful when you get to the decimal point that you make sure that you answer correctly with the decimal point. All right, let's look at this first example that they've done for you. It says 37, so we broke up 37 into a 30 and a 7, times 9 and 5 tenths. So we have 9 and 5 tenths. Remember when we make our box method, we just break it up into our place values. And now you're just going to find all of your partial products. 9 times 30 holes is 270 holes. 9 times 7 is Supposed to be 63, but for some reason my model shows only 6. If yours does that in your book, they might have made a typo. Will you just go ahead and make a little 3 right there? And then 30 times 5 tenths is 15 holes. Because if you come up here, you can do 30 times 5 tenths. So let's go ahead and just prove why. 5 tenths times 0 is going to be 0. 5 times 3 is 15. Now remember, our answer should have 1 in the place value of tenths, so that shows 15 holes. So that's why we have a 15 down there. And now let's look at the seven times five tenths right here, five tenths times seven. Let's see why they have three and five tenths. Seven times five is 35. Seven times zero is zero, plus three is three holes. We have one place in our place value. So we have 3 and 5 tenths, which is why we have that there. And then all you have to do is add up all your partial products to get your answer. And you can see that they added them up and got 351 and 5 tenths. So that's what we're going to do today. Now I don't plan on doing all the questions with you from this page. We're just going to pick just a couple to do because we'll be practicing more in class tomorrow. Because remember, this is one strategy to do. So let's look at question 2. I want you to break it up into place value. 84 will be broken up into 80 and a 4. Let's go ahead and write that up top. 84. And now let's go ahead and write 24 hundredths broken up into place value. We have 2 tenths and we have 4 hundredths. So I'm going to write 0 decimal point zero four. And now we can find our partial products. Let's start out with doing 80 times 2 tenths. So over here on the side, I'm just going to do 80 times 2 tenths. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 8 is 16. Now let's remember, we have one place value in our decimal to the tenths place, so we need to put a decimal right there. So we have 16 holes. So 80 groups of 2 tenths would equal 16 holes. So now let's go ahead and do 2 tenths times 4 holes. 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 0 is 0. We have one group in our decimal going to the tenths, so our answer needs to go to the tenths place. So if we have four groups of 2 tenths, that would be 8 tenths. So over here I'm going to write 8 tenths. All right, now let's go down to 80 times 4 hundredths. I'm going to put 80 times, I'll put a decimal point, 0, 4. Here we go. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 8 is 32. Now remember, we don't have to multiply our 0. We can just go ahead and know that we have two spots that goes to my hundredths place. So I should put two spots to my hundredths here. So we would say if I have 80 groups of four hundredths, that would be end up as three holes and 20 hundredths, or 2 tenths. And last but not least, we have 4 hundredths times 4. So I'm going to write it as 4 hundredths times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, 
and four times zero tenths is zero, but you have to add that one that you regrouped. So you'll have one tenth, and then we have zero holes. So I have two to my hundredths place, two spots there in my place value, so therefore we should say four groups of four hundredths is sixteen hundredths. That makes sense. So now all we have to do is add up all of our partial products. So go ahead and find a spot on your Go Math book or maybe on a notebook piece of paper where you can show your work. We have 16 holes plus 3 and 20 hundredths plus 8 tenths plus 16 hundredths. Now I like to make them all go to the same place value when I add just because it makes it easier for me. So let's go ahead and add it up. My hundredths place should have a 6 hundredth value. My tenths place would be 8 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 1 tenth is 11 tenths. So that would, I would have to regroup and make 1 whole and 1 tenth. Drop your decimal point down. 6 holes plus 1 hole plus 3 more holes would be 10 holes. Regroup. And you should have a total of 20 and 16 hundredths as our final product. So let's go ahead and look at question three. If you don't have room in your, on your page right there, I don't mind if you do this on notebook paper and then just bring that to class tomorrow to check um, just to show us that you did it on notebook paper to show your work. Or if you can write pretty small, you can go ahead and try to fit it right in that spot. But on number three, we're going to break up our 13 holes into a group of tens, one ten, and three ones. So it has a value of a ten and a three. Now let's look at the value of 53 hundredths. I would have 5 tenths because there's 5 in my tenths place. So we have the value of 5 tenths and we also have the value of 3 hundredths. Now we're ready to multiply. Let's go ahead and start by doing 5 tenths times 10 holes. So 10 times 5 tenths, I'm going to do it right up here. Remember, now we have one place to the decimal. Okay, so we would say that would be the value of 5. And that makes sense because if you have, remember, 5 tenths is the same as a half. And a half of 10 is 5 holes. So that answer is reasonable. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next question. 3 times 1 half, also known as 5 tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my equation as 5 tenths times 3. And if you think about 5 tenths being the value of a half, just think, what's a half of 3? I know what it is, but I'm going to prove why right here to show you. 3 times 5 is 15 tenths. So we're going to carry the 1, drop the 5. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1 whole. Now look right there. You're going to have one place to the right of your decimal point, so therefore you have to have your answer go to the tenths as well. So the product should be one and a half, also known as one and five tenths. That answer makes sense because a half of three is one and a half. Now let's come down here to the next question, ten times three hundredths. Let's go ahead and work it out right up here. I'm going to do ten times decimal point zero three for three hundredths. Three times zero is zero. Three times one is three. Okay, now let's look and see. We have to have two spaces to the right of my decimal point. So your answer needs to be 30 hundredths. All right, and now let's go to our last question, which we're going to do 3 hundredths times 3. So let's go ahead and set that up. 3 hundredths times 3. And I know 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0 again. I need to have two spots right there to the right of my decimal point, so it needs to be that way in my product. So our product should be the value of 9 hundredths. So now what we have to do is add up all of our partial products. I'm going to start out with my 5 holes, then 1 and a half. Put your decimal point down and add 30 hundredths and then nine hundredths. Make sure you keep all your place values lined up. A good way to do that is just make them all have a value in the ones place, all have a value in the tenths place, and all have a value go to the hundredths place to keep them nice and lined up. Okay, go ahead and add up your partial products. We have nine in my hundredths, eight tenths, and six wholes. So our product should be six and 
89 hundredths. Now the other strategy in this lesson that we're teaching you tomorrow in class is that you can also, if you don't want to do the expanded form and make the box, you can just uh, go ahead and try this strategy where you turn it all into whole numbers when you multiply. Now I'm going to go ahead and put 12 and 71 hundredths on top um, and times 32. All right. What you can do is you can just go ahead and multiply and then you just count your spaces over and then that's how many spaces you should have in your decimal point. So this is really the traditional method that you guys might feel more comfortable with. We also call that the hugs and kisses method we did last year in uh, fourth grade. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this way as well. All right, I'm going to erase this part right here. Let's go ahead and multiply 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 2 times 1 is 2. So that's two groups of 12 and 71 hundredths would be 25 and 42 hundredths. Now I'm going to go ahead, but I'm not putting my decimal point there yet. I'm going to wait until I get to my product. All right, now let's go ahead and remember, kiss away what you regrouped and put down your hug. We call that our circle right there, our hug. Now we're going to be lined up to multiply our tens place. 3 times 1 hundredth is going to have the value of 3 right there. 3 times 7 is 21. Carry the 2, drop the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. And 3 times that 1 group of 10 would be 3 groups of 10. Now let's go ahead and add up all of our numbers as if we did not have decimals yet. And now we're going to strategically place our decimal. All right, I'm going to know that I have two places to the right of my decimal, so I need to have two places to the right of my decimal in my product. And this answer is actually reasonable, because if we were to estimate our uh, product, we would have had 30 times about 10, and we know 30 times 10 is 300. So our whole number should go to the hundreds place, which it did. Now, you might say, but wow, how can that be possible? Because this is 300 and that's 406. But remember, you're estimating, and remember, this is 2, that's 32 times 12. So you're, these are bigger numbers than what you estimated to. So your product is going to be bigger. Therefore, we did have a correct product here. All right, let's move on to our word problems at the bottom of the page. All right, for our problem solving at the bottom, let's go ahead and just do one of the two. Let's do number 10. It says, Tessa is on the track team. For, pra for practice and exercise, she runs two and 2,500 miles each day. At the end of 14 days, how many total miles will she have run? Well, you can see each right there is our clue word to multiply, and we're looking for a total number at the end of the 14 days. Therefore, I know I'm looking for a big answer, which is why I'm going to multiply. Now you can either break this up into the box method to work on this one, or you can just multiply using traditional of 2 and 25 hundredths times 14, but make sure you put your decimal point in the right spot. But I'm going to go ahead and walk you through using the box method on this one, and then we can check it with traditional. All right, so let's go ahead and look. We have to break up to place values. Let's start with our 14. I'm going to put a 10 and a 4. Will you do that for me on your paper as well? And then we're going to break up 2 and 25 hundredths into all of the place values. Let's go ahead and make a line right there, and we're going to put 2 above that. Now look at the 25 hundredths. We're going to have 2 tenths, and then we're going to have 5 hundredths. So those are all of my place values. So we're going to actually have six partial products here. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and multiply the first ones are very easy. We have 10 times 2. We all know that to be 20. Put 20 in that first partial product. And I'm going to go ahead and just come over here and record 20 just for our adding process. Now let's go ahead and um, multiply 2 times 4. You should have 8 holes. And I'm going to go ahead and put 8 right there to keep it nice and lined up. And now let's go ahead and multiply my decimals. We have 10 times 2 tenths. So 10 times 2 is 20, but remember, my decimal needs to have one place to the right of the decimal point, so we need to stick right here. So now the value is going to be 2 holes. 
all right, because it goes to the right of the decimal point. And if you're not sure how we did that, just come over here and just do 10 times 2 tenths. And you can see 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2. You have one spot to the right of the decimal, so you should have one spot right there. And that's how I was able to get two holes. All right, now let's go ahead and um, I'll put that 2 right back in there. All right, now let's go ahead and multiply 4 times 2 tenths. 4 times 2 tenths will be 8 tenths because you have 4 groups of 2 tenths. And of course, 4 times 2 is 8, and then you have one spot to the right of the decimal, so you need to have that in your product. So go ahead and put a decimal point and an 8. All right. Now, let's go ahead and multiply our 10 times 5 hundredths. All right, our 10 times 5 hundredths, I'm going to put that right here. We're going to have 10 groups of 5 hundredths. All right, let's go ahead and multiply. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 1 is 5. I'm going to stop right there, and I need to know I have two spots to the right of my decimal. So my product should be 50 hundredths, and that makes sense. If you have 5 hundredths and you have 10 groups of them, that would be 50 hundredths. So that answer is reasonable. And now we're going to go down to a 5 hundredths times 4 holes. Oh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and record my other partial products, 2 holes and 8 tenths. Now we have to be very careful on this that we put them in the right spots. All right, And we have 50 hundredths or 5 tenths as well. All right, now we're to our last one, 5 hundredths times 4. So I'm going to go ahead and put down 5 hundredths times 4. And I can already tell you I know what it's going to be because I know if I had four groups of 5 hundredths, it should be 20 hundredths. And that makes sense. 5 hundredths times 4 would be 20 hundredths. All right, let's add that to our group that we're going to add up. And then we're able to go ahead and add up all of our partial products. I'm going to go ahead and make them all go to the same place value, to the hundredths place, just so it's easier. Right, let's add up our hundredths. We should have zero. Our tenths, we should have 15. So we're going to carry the one, drop the five, put down our decimal point. Eight plus two is 10, plus one more is 11. And then one plus two is three tenths. So we should have 31 and 50 hundredths as our final product. Or you could call it 31 and 5 tenths. Now if you chose to do that the traditional way, you should have came out with the same product of 31 and 5 tenths or 31 and 50 hundredths. All right, here are your two questions on the back side of your homework page. Questions one and two, choose either the box method or the traditional way. If you choose traditional way, please make sure that you put down your um, decimal point in the correct spot. And um, if you do the box method, please make sure that you um, add up all of your partial products. And then also do questions three through six as well, and we'll check those all together tomorrow. Before you stop your homework tonight, though, don't forget at the top of your homework page to rate yourself as level one, two, three, or four. And we will check your math homework tomorrow at the beginning of class. And we will practice on this topic in class to really get good at it and uh, to feel confident. So if you don't feel like you're an expert yet, don't worry. We'll keep practicing to get better. Have a great night.